Married everyone, welcome along. Weekend work. Time to start a new journey, isn't it? So, one of the things I've done, one of the things I do in my life is I'm involved in parkrun, which, if I'm honest, it's a bit of a cult. Yeah, people kind of get into it and then they get really into it and all right. But one of the things that it does do is it delivers some stats. But there are some nice little nuances to the stats. Kind of things that you do see on some other public data feeds, but some things that seem to be quite unique to it as well in terms of the complexities of the data and the nuances and the whole way people like to see it. So what I thought was, let's have a look at my local park run, yeah, and what we do for the stats for that. And over a period, let's build it, see if we can make it better and maybe make it the next generation version. So before we go much further, why don't you take a minute, head on down below, like and subscribe, support the channel, and let YouTube know that the content we produce isn't mad and too crazy and obsessed with part one. Even though for the next eight weeks, we're gonna be looking at this data set and piecing it together from scratch. All right, so here we are, yeah? week one, the new start. This is where we're gonna start and begin everything to do with this, okay? So the first thing that you always have to do is you need to be thinking, so what are we looking to do, okay? So a park run has events, okay? So there's instances, occurrences of a park run, okay? Each event will have people and they will have a time, an age grade, Okay. And lastly, they also, obviously, they'll be in, like, one of the main things is they're in, like, uh, an age group category. Category. And there's a one piece that, that we haven't managed to pull through yet, and it's not, I just never got the time. So let's see if we can pull this through this time. And that's actually your club. G. Start that with a C, let's be up properly. Okay, a club. So a club, how many events have you done? If you've done 25, 50 events, well, 50 events, sorry, you get your, t you get your first T-shirt, 100, you get your second, right? And, you know, it's quite a competitive thing, seeing how many, you know, um, I've got the most T-shirts in my area kind of thing, you know. So people get like that. So it would be good to be able to pull that through. There's also club... I'm going to put times two, isn't it? Because you've got the club that you're a member of as well. So you might be a member of like, the Jamaican sprint team, for example. What Jamaican? Eh? <laughs> they just get worse. I'm here all week, by the way. Okay. So that's kind of things for people that we've got. And one of the things we need to remember, let's just get rid of all this, okay, is that from a people perspective, okay, people take part in things, don't they? So you've got people take part in events, okay? So one event will have many people, okay? So one, one event will have many people. People can attend many events. So what we've got there is what's known as a many To many relationship okay and that's one of the more difficult relationships to manage and to evaluate as you're going forward a typical way of dealing with it is to use a bridge table okay and that's the way we'll do it for here okay so what a bridge table will mean is that we'll have people okay lots of people okay people, and then there's going to be events, okay, that happen as well. And then in the middle, we've got a record of event one, Ross was there, event two, Steve was there, event three, Ross and Steve were there, okay, and we can do that. So you end up with a one-to-many relationship on both sides of that bridge table, okay? 
So bridge tables are a useful way of dealing with things like this. And in essence, what it means is, when we come to look at a schema side for this, okay, so if we come back out of here, let's scrub this down again. Do, do, do. When we look at the schema for it, what we're gonna have is people, events, and then participation. Okay, with both of those tables leading into it. That's gonna be really our foundation. So that participation is gonna become our fact, isn't it? So that's gonna be our fact, people and events are gonna be our main dimensions, okay? You can kind of get behind that so far, so good. Believe it or not, you're starting to now think in terms of a Kimball schema, because already as you're starting to say, well, right, okay. And it's a natural way of thinking about it. Now, Kimball schemas for all, they've been around for a while, okay? It. <sighs> They've got a reputation from people, of, it's, it sounds really difficult, it sounds complicated to do, right? Let's put that in. Kimball, okay? So, a Kimball schema, it's not always about complexity, it's about how you think about the relationships and how you think about things. Because what we wanna be able to do, really, if we think about it is, what are the aggregations? And that's the key piece that you think through when you're doing analytics. And that's the bit that makes analytics different from um, a pure database, that there's, there's a bit more in there. There's, it's more complex, there's more complexity to it. And it's about saying, well, we need to assess and process and manage and understand our aggregations. So your fact tables are gonna be assisting in your aggregations. So for example, we'll want to know people count. So how many people attended an event? We'll want to know an event count. So how many events has a person attended, yeah? Not difficult this like is it okay when a person attends and participates they get some reference to it okay in retail that might be the price of what they've ordered or something like that or the actual total in this what they get is an age grade okay so it's an age grade percentage okay that will exist in that participation table so in here Okay, so this is gonna have person ID, event ID, age grade, okay. These are things that we want as the minimum, isn't it? Okay, and we're gonna expand on this and we'll extend and we'll make these richer as we go further down. But already, I hope you're starting to see, oh, this is great. I, can, I can understand how this is going to work. You know, you might say, well, you've got events. They take place on a certain time. So presumably, you're going to have a calendar. I don't know what happened there. Oh, let's get rid of that. have a calendar okay and we need that so that we can actually cope with what's happening and where the events are and it allows us to start to stagger them and put them in the right place it might be something we want to do it might not we might find 
when we do this because events, yes, they take place at a certain date time. Do we need the calendar? We'll have to wait and see, won't we? You might find there's a way around it. So we've got all this, right? That's the main thing that we need to be thinking through, isn't it? It's that whole Kimball schema. What are the aggregations that I'm going to need? Okay, so if we're, let's see. So, what aggregations? Yeah, what else would we need? Okay, that's kind of the key. What buy? So aggregations buy, and remember your buy is gonna be your dimensions. So you aggregate on your fact tables by your dimensions. So, you know, back in the retail space, sales by month. Month becomes part of the dimension. That's where your calendar table comes from. Sales by year, sales by, and that's why all of a sudden you start to evolve into having, right, we've got this mindset where we have to be progressing and moving these forward. So we can see what aggregations are we gonna need and what's it gonna to need to be aggregated by is gonna drive the model that we need to build. And that structure and getting that right is everything in Power BI. So we've got to the point now, haven't we, where we've built this idea, this mindset, that we're gonna need three core tables, aren't we? So we're gonna need like our people table, we need our events table and our participation table, yeah? For, as a bridge table. That's your term of the day, isn't it, okay? A bridge table, okay? So we will get all that in when we start to build and process what we're gonna do next week, which is about the data flow. Because it's this week's more about trying to get you into the mindset of saying, right, I need to be following a Kimball schema we need to do this. We need to think in terms of facts and dimensions. And from that thinking about facts and dimensions and following up with what aggregations do we need? What do those aggregations need to be by? So we need a count of people. We need a count of events by of people by events and events by people. Two main counts, isn't it? Potentially we've got a whole thing of age grade over time. In our participation table, where we're going to have these three bits of information we've got, the other information that we're also going to get is, of course, so presumably if we, th if we think insensibly about it, age grade, time. Do we need something else? Is there anything else we could do? Category. Now, you might say, well, isn't that going to be part of the person? And I would say yes, but people move through their category, don't they? So I might be a child next, you know, in a year's time, I might be a, a senior, I might be a veteran, I might be, you know, people go up. And as you go up through the age categories, there's different, there's different expectations. Times are, like, are important at an age category level. So, you know, for an event, people might go, oh, who's the quickest over 60? Or who's the quickest under 18, those kind of questions can come through. So we need to have that category at that participation time event, at that participation level. So these are things that you'll see will start to influence your fact table. Well, that makes sense because the fact is that Ross ran the park run on this date. That's the fact, it's fact table. He ran it at this time in this category with this age grade. Those are all facts. There's nothing that we'd really be able to move away from that. And that's where what you put into a fact table, those facts. So what do you reckon then? Okay. Park run is it's unique in terms of like the stuff that goes on with it. The stats, it's something a lot of people are interested in. Almost like you see with some of the American sports, kind of, which all of course evolved because you can't bet. On results anyway so you have to bet on everything else so stats kind of arrive from it there's the stats of parkrun as well so this week we've looked really haven't we at kind of that whole consultancy side of it or that requirements gathering step 
that you need to do before you do anything in terms of a build. So next week, what we're going to start doing is saying, right, now we know what we need to do. Let's build that data flow, that unit of measure, which is going to be a single event. And we're going to pull that single event in. And then the week after, we'll do that build against the single event or that copy to actually replicate that and show how that moves that we can then do multiple events and then we'll start to build that up together so hope you'll stick with the channel keep sticking with this series man it'll be lots of fun and of course if you live in an area with park run why not head along have a go take part if you're up to it or of course volunteer all the park runs globally are reliant on volunteers helping them out and making the events happen week in week out and i honestly enjoy spending my time volunteering it's really nice and a rewarding experience so for now have a great weekend and if you're taking part in parkrun have a good one take care Ta -da.